Basa YouTube. What's up, everybody? <laughs> How's it going? Want to just say sorry for no upload yesterday. You guys are just gonna get an apology from me every time I don't upload daily. Like, I've been trying my best to upload like every day this year. I think I've only missed like maybe 20, 25 days like the entire year, and that's probably pushing it, honestly, maybe less than that. But yeah, again, sorry no upload yesterday, but I do have for you guys today pretty fun good ubers wi-fi battle i got off of my discord against meteor black he is somebody who's actually come out to my streams and i should be back to streaming hopefully by the time ultra sun and moon comes out because i definitely want to get back into that and i keep telling you guys i'm gonna get back into it and i'm gonna try my best i promise you guys promise 100 percent make sure to answer the question of the day which was at the beginning of the video if not then it will be at the end of the battle so yeah, we can go ahead and uh, jump right into this. Uh, this is a pretty fun Ubers team. Honestly, I don't remember where I got this team. I want to say I got it off the forums, because uh, normally that's where I go nowadays to uh, kind of find Ubers teams if I want to use one. So Going into this matchup, uh, Meteor Black had so many terrifying Pokemon. Uh, Mewtwo is absurdly difficult to switch into if I want to keep Magearna healthy enough for Xerneas, which is absolutely terrifying. Also, Marshadow is absurdly strong, so I have to be careful with that. Also, Arceus, if it's SD, could be a problem. And then, like, a bulky uh, Glare, Thousand Arrows, Rest Talk, Zygarde, 100% can also be really damn annoying to deal with. So, he's going to be leading off with the Mewtwo Y. Not Mewtwo Y. The Mewtwo. As I'm going to be leading off with my Groudon here, I'm going to go ahead and get up my Stealth Rocks, knowing that I can live any one hit that he may want to go for, and then I can go uh, from there. But he actually ends up switching directly on now into the Zygarde here, which is perfectly fine by me, because this means I will be able to switch directly into my own Arceus is here the Arceus ground I do have the ice beam thankfully so if he did uh, try to go for coil or just go straight for the thousand arrows not coil, sorry, but, uh, the glare then I would be able to still live anything and go for the ice beam the next turn as he reveals to have the coil I do still end up doing a good amount of damage to this Zygarde and that is excellent however though because he is coil this thing could actually prove to be a humongous problem late game if I lose my best answer to it, which is my Xerneas and possibly my Kyogre. But at the same time, I need Kyogre to possibly deal with his physically offensive threats. And then Xerneas, if I needed to deal with his Zygarde, may not be able to sweep late game. So I have to keep that in mind. As I end up going safely for the Ice Beam here, I could not mess around with the Zygarde. I had to go for the Ice Beam and he knows that, so he's gonna make an aggressive switch directly into his Kyurem White, which is awesome, man. Kyurem White is actually a really cool Uber's Pokemon. One that you never really see, considering that it's not really the best Mon in the tier, but it's still a very cool looking Mon nonetheless. As he turns out to go for the Roost, I end up making a bit of a questionable play here. Like, I probably should have switched out, honestly. There was not much reason for me to stay in here. But at the same time, I didn't think that a Fusion Flare would do about 80% to my Magirna. So I guess on the bright side, I'm able to get rid of the Kiram White, which was difficult for me to switch into. But now, I lose my best answer to a potential Geomancy Xerneas in the form of my Magirna and that could be very bad for me late game so he's gonna end up bringing in his Arceus here which turns out to be Arceus normal so expecting him to want to go straight for the swords end I'm gonna make a ballsy play here and I'm gonna stay in and I'm gonna go for the pain split by going for the pain split I can be out of range of where a plus two hit from Xerneas will not knock me out after leftovers and the pain split recovery although i guess in hindsight i probably could have gone for the power swap because sd was very obvious also you might have just gone for the earthquake or just predicted me to switch out so sd in there was definitely a good play on his part as this turn i'm gonna be forced to basically sack something off of my team because i don't want to lose magirna and it's between either my arceus or my kyogre and ultimately i feel like i can have more use from my kyogre as opposed to my arceus so i'm gonna decide to sack that off as he knocks me out with an earthquake extreme speed combo this does give me a free switch into my marsh shadow and even if he is choppleberry depending on how much hp investment he has i can actually knock him out with this close combat luckily though turns out that he's not choppleberry and if he was choppleberry that means that my marsh shadow would have been knocked out by a shadow claw and then kyogre would have had to take a plus two hit and that could have put me in a very bad scenario because his marsh shadow is definitely a humongous problem to me so as he ends up bringing it in here 
I am expecting him to just want to go straight for the Shadow Sneak because after Life Orb Recoil, I'm 100% in range of where an opposing Shadow Sneak from Life Orb Mars Shadow knocks me out and I really do not want to risk a speed tie because I've been in that scenario before and it hasn't worked out for me. So I'm going to switch into my physically defensive Primal Kyogre here and this Shadow Sneak honestly did way too much damage. Like, I did not expect it to do a Sada like 15% as he then goes for the close combat. Because I am physically defensive, I tank the hit and I will be able to in return knock him out with the Scald. Even if he hadn't stayed in and he tried to switch out, nothing on his team really safely switched into a Scald in the rain. So I thought that just staying in there was definitely by far my best play as he tried to risk knocking me out. As in comes the Xerneas. Uh, this thing is kind of a problem now. I do have Primal Groudon though in the back. But if he has like HP ground or something, that could be a little bit detrimental. So I'm going to stay in this turn expecting him to just go for the Geomancy. Knowing that he will be able to safely live any move I want to go for. And this Kyogre does not have the roar. My best bet if I wanted to try and beat this with Kyogre was to ice beam freeze it and I know I'm not gonna get the freeze so at least by going for the rest I can still have my Kyogre to have the ice beam for his Zygarde that is still chilling in the back because that thing is still pretty scary so I end up going for the rest here as I said and now I'm gonna decide to switch on now into my Kyogre not my Kyogre sorry into my Primal Groudon expecting him to just want to go straight for the Moonblast or potentially go for the Thunder because my Xerneas on this team actually has Thunder which is kind of cool and I'm guessing it's just there to be able to beat ho and smack around Primal Kyogre. As he ends up going for another Geomancy. Now this actually had me very, very terrified. That was a brilliant play on Meteor Black's part. Because now it comes down to whether or not I hit this Precipice Blade. If I miss Precipice Blade here, this thing a plus four is able to manhandle my Magirna. And it's able to just beat the rest of my team. Thankfully though, Groudon is well trained. I'm able to land the Precipice Blade. Not only do I get the blade off, but as you're about to see, I chew this plus four stab Moonblast, which is absurd, man. I don't know if that's just how amazing Primal Groudon is, or maybe Xerneas is just not that strong because I legitimately thought he was gonna knock me out there. Even if he had knocked me out, I would have been able to bring in my Mars Shadow then and gone for the Shadow Sneak. And if he had tried to switch out, I do have the Rocks up, so Rocks would have knocked him out regardless. But still, it's just kind of baffling to me that Groudon was able to live a plus four hit. So he ends up bringing in his Zygarde here. And my best bet is just to go for the Dragon Claw. I mean the Dragon Tail, because I do not want him to try and set up on my Groudon. So at least by Dragon Telling him out, yes, he does still get the rest off, but I can now prevent him from going for the coil against my Groudon. So I Dragon Tail him into his last Mon, which is going to be this Mewtwo Y. And the good thing about this is that while I may not have a good switch into the Mewtwo Y, I can still just sack off my Primal Groudon here. So he is going to end up knocking me out with the Psy Strike as this will now allow me to get a free switch into my own Xerneas. And so long as he does not get a crit or a freeze with Ice Beam, I should be in a pretty good scenario to just end off this match with my Xerneas. So he is going to end up going for the Psy Strike. If he had critted me here, I'm not sure if he was in range of where Mars Shadow would have been able to knock him out with the Shadow Sneak, but that actually might have been a little bit bad because then would have come down to having to rely on my Kyogre to try and beat his uh, his Zygarde there. So I do end up living the hit and I'm able to get off the Geomancy. What this does allow me to do now is guarantee outspeeding Mewtwo the following turn and then knocking him out with the plus two Moonblast. So I will be able to finish off the Mewtwo Y here. And at this point, his last Pokemon is going to be the Zygarde, which with it being asleep and me being at plus two stab, a fairy or a boosted there's no chance that he's gonna be able to live this moonblast and I will be able to knock out the Zygarde here and that is going to be 
the victory in my favor. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I really felt like this match was a lot closer than the 4 0 because, as I mentioned, the match literally came down to whether or not I had landed Precipice Blade, and him going for a second Geomancy, I still think, was a really, really good play because he knew that I would have to rely on Sleep Talk turns, and with uh, Geomancy giving Xerneas a plus two spadef death boost, there was no chance that my Zygarde would have been able, I mean, that my Kyogre would have been able to do too much damage to him. So, yeah, that is going to be a good game to Meteor Black. Make sure to answer the question of the day. And with that being said, guys, I'll see you all tomorrow. So, later, everybody. No matter where you're at, I'm not here to make friends. It's time to attack and deplete your HP with a final smash. Don't make me turn around and pull a six foot. Hacks. <laughs> six foot, six foot hacks, hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks.